Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some relationship stories crossed with Am I the Arsehole? And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, and let's dive straight in to today's first story. Now, today's first story was suggested by Garuda Shiro over on Twitter, so thank you so much for that, and it does come with an update as well. It's from Throwaway Mom 11 who says, am I the asshole for accidentally sleeping on the couch with my husband? My 24 female, husband 24 male, and I are visiting my family. My husband, kids, and I were getting ready to go to our room for bed when my parents started acting really awkward, like something was off. I asked them what was wrong and my mom quietly told me that my husband should sleep on the couch in the living room. I was a bit shocked because why? Apparently, my dad doesn't feel comfortable. I called her and my dad weird and told my husband to ignore them. We finally put our kids to sleep and are getting ready to sleep when my mum barges into the room while we're changing and says that she doesn't want us in the same room alone in her house. My husband is freaking terrified at this point because he was in the middle of changing, so he leaves for the couch and my mum says she's sorry, but she's not in the mood to deal with my dad's complaining all night. I pointed out that my younger sister, 21 female, and her husband have slept in the same room at their house multiple times, and she's never said anything, and she goes, well, your husband is white, so your dad feels weird. I was over it, so I said fine. I got up at like 4 a.m. to drink some water, and I saw my husband wide awake just lying on the couch. He said the couch is uncomfortable as fuck, which yes it is, so I sat down next to him and we both accidentally fell asleep. I woke up later to my mum freaking out. She was whisper yelling so she doesn't wake up my dad and asked if we're that codependent on each other that we can't spend one night alone. I tried explaining that it was a mistake, but she kept calling me disrespectful and said I was selfish, etc. I was upset, but my son called for me, so we ended our conversation. Now I'm wondering if I am really the asshole in this situation. My mum says I am because I was being selfish, disrespectful, and completely disregarding how difficult our life would have become if my dad found us. My whole thing is that it was an accident. I'm 24, my dad is being weird, and my sister's husband doesn't have to do this, so why does mine? Am I the arsehole? Edit. My family and I are South Asian. Edit two, yes, I know a lot of this has to do with my husband being white and them being racist and prejudiced. I called my parents weird, strange, and awkward because of what they were doing, glaring at each other, swearing at each other under their breaths, randomly going quiet out of nowhere, etc. They do this pretty often and have been doing it for as long as I can remember. So much that my sister and I call it the weird mood. Like, keep an eye out for mum and dad, they're in their weird mood. Sorry for so many edits, but this should be the last one. I'm getting a lot of people asking the same thing, so I'm just gonna copy one of my replies. My kids were not in danger. We live over eight hours away. It was snowing heavily and the roads would have been icy and pitch black. It was after 11 p.m. My sons are two and three and the nearest hotel is pretty far away. Not to mention my husband and I have been driving for literal hours and were completely exhausted. Trust me, we definitely thought about it and both my husband and I decided to stay the night. And before we move on to that update, we're gonna cover a couple of comments which OP replied to. So papercrane 82 says, not the asshole. what the fuck? What kind of shenanigans is this? I don't see why your dad has any issues with you sleeping in the same room with your husband. You guys have kids, so clearly sex has happened. And why is it any different that he is white? Why are your parents racist? Do they treat your kids differently because they're half white? If they do, you need to step up and protect your children from your bigoted parents and step up for your husband too. To which OP replied saying, right, I'm glad that I'm not the only one who thinks my parents are being very strange. Like, I don't know what they're so afraid of considering we have literal kids. They treat my children well. If they even dared to say something to them, I would definitely not be in good terms with them. I'm the first person in my family to marry a white person, so I understood the initial shock when I told them, but that was years ago, and I thought they had gotten used to it. Because of you know what, this is my husband's first time staying over, so I didn't know this was going to be an issue at all. I'm still pissed, but my husband keeps telling me it's fine and we're leaving anyways. However, now that I've gotten a few comments, I'm thinking of talking to my parents about how weird they are being. 
Vivid Efficiency 7347 says you're the asshole, not for sleeping on the couch, but for not standing up for your husband against the blatant racism shown here. Plus, your mum stormed in when your husband and you were changing, which your husband clearly said he felt awkward about. OP leave the house and refuse to come back. Slash visit without an apology to your husband and clear rules that are equal for you and your sister. To which OP says, no, I understand that I should have stood my ground. It all happened really fast and my sons were starting to get irritated to the noise. So I needed my mum to just leave, which is why I was over it. I mentioned this in another reply, but my husband is insisting letting the whole thing go. But I don't want to, especially now that I've read these comments. Yoga Fun Girl says not the asshole for falling asleep on the sofa next to your husband. But what are you going to do next? Here's what you should do. Set clear boundaries that if your husband will not be respected by your parents, then you can no longer visit the home. That includes an overnight stay. You are married. You have kids. They are the priority. OP replies saying, yes, I'm planning on saying all this and more the second my dad gets home from wherever the hell he was all day. And one more from wearing a dot says... Not the asshole. you are adults married to each other with two children and your father can't handle that you are still all of these things while in his house. What the fuck? And somehow your mother is responsible for enforcing his ridiculous rule. Oh, and if he gets upset, that is her fault. So your father is an asshole, and your mother has become emotionally immune to it from years of trying to survive such raging assholery. Good grief. Maybe this is your cue to create a bit of distance here or stay in a hotel or invite them to your house and, and have father sleep on your couch. P.S. Notice how your father has made your mother completely responsible for managing his emotions. OP replied to that saying, wow, I think you're completely spot on with the whole your father is an asshole and your mother has become emotionally immune. I'm already quite distant with my parents. Well, my dad really. So I'm not too bothered by not visiting them again for a long time. The only reason we visited is because of my children wondering why we never see my parents, while they see daddy's mum and dad just about every day. Oh, and now I'm tempted to make my father sleep on the couch if they ever visit. Lol. So now we're going to move on to OP's updated post to see what happens next. So a lot of people ask me for an update and since I don't really want to think about this whole situation for some time, I decided to quickly make a post before I put this entire thing behind me. A lot of you were understandably harsh, which I appreciate and I admit I should have been more firm and shouldn't have let my husband sleep on the couch at all. Yes, I didn't handle the situation too well, but honestly, did the best I could given the fact that my mum was yelling and my children were starting to get irritated and were very close to waking up and crying. We needed my mum to leave so that our kids wouldn't wake up and cry and so my husband decided to just go on the couch. I also am quite aware that my parents were being prejudiced and racist towards my husband. I never excused it. The only reason I was calling my parents weird and awkward is because they were acting like that. As in, they were fighting each other quietly slash in their heads. This is what I meant every time I said they were acting weird. Now for the update. I told my husband that I was really sorry for how my parents treated him. He told me he genuinely didn't care and that he's sorry he's causing so much trouble. Yeah, no. I made sure he realized that this situation is not his fault. We had a heart-to-heart -heart talk and eventually decided that we'd talk to my parents together when my dad finally came home. So basically, I told him that they had disrespected my husband last night, that we both are married and have kids and are planning on having more kids. We were going to sleep in the same room, in the same bed, just like other married couples. And if they had a problem with that, then they needed to figure it out. Because while I made a mistake by not standing my ground the first time, I wasn't going to let it happen again. I told them I was 100% willing to go no contact again and that I wasn't afraid to do so. My dad immediately started yelling at my husband. He called my husband weak, pathetic and said he wasn't good enough for me. He also said that my husband ruined me and my future and that I'm now dirty and sinful and all that. I shut that down right away. I told my dad that he was weak and pathetic, not my husband, who has been there for me and done things for me that my dad would never in his life do for anyone. That's when my mum finally decides to jump in. She told my dad to stop acting creepily obsessive over me, that I'm not his doll and I'm not his property. She mentioned a few disturbing things I'd rather not repeat as I'm having trouble processing them myself, but she called him out for being jealous of my husband. My dad left the house and according to my mum, he probably went to a hotel or something. 
My mum apologized for everything. She even apologized to my husband for when she barged into the room while we were changing. She said that my dad and her had been fighting all day and that she wrongly took her anger out on us. She said she understood if we didn't want to stay any longer and for the sake of, well, everything, we decided to leave. And that's that. I don't really have much to say because my mind's been kind of empty. I'm just numb and sad, but also relieved. My dad and I have had a shitty relationship since I was 18, but knowing what he really thinks of me and my family hurts a lot. And it isn't even because of our culture or religion. It's just him being a shitty person. And because of this, I'm going to go no contact with my parents again. I didn't expect so much attention and I'm admittedly really overwhelmed. I don't use Reddit at all and wrote my post out of frustration. Thank you for all your comments and DMs. I know that there are things that a lot of you just won't get due to the cultural differences and I didn't include a few details for privacy reasons, but those things don't really matter. We are finally home after the most exhausting days of our lives and again, I feel so incredibly numb. My husband keeps checking up on me in fear that I'm going to have a breakdown, but I just don't feel anything. My mother-in-law and father-in-law are coming over to babysit the kids while we go out for dinner since restrictions have been lifted, so I guess I'm happy for that. I don't know, but this state of numbness happens to me sometimes and it usually passes in a day or two, so I'll be fine. This is getting very long, so I'm going to end it here. I'm sorry if I skipped a few things, but I hope you guys understand that I'm not in the right state of mind. Stay safe, everyone. Edit, I'm still in contact with my mum. I can't force her to leave my dad, but I'm helping her and will be there for her if she ever needs me. I appreciate everyone's comments, advice, and kind words. Thank you so very much. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be logging out as I'm getting a few messages that are actually really hurtful. Turns out my husband was right, lol. I suppose I am about to have a breakdown as things that my mum told me are beginning to freak me out and overwhelm me. Like a few of you said, perhaps it's time for therapy. Thanks once again for all the advice and kindness. Then a comment that OP left under the updated post. I didn't call anyone ignorant. I just said that if you aren't South Asian or Muslim, a lot of things may not make sense, which is perfectly okay. I also said that it doesn't matter in the end either as culture and religion doesn't excuse anything. By privacy, I mean that I don't feel comfortable sharing everything in too much detail. I don't know why this is an issue. I know I didn't defend my husband properly over the couch situation. I'm well aware and I feel guilty over it, which I know is my fault. I tried making things right and I know a lot of you think I don't deserve my husband, which yes, I honestly think no one deserves him. There is nobody as kind and wonderful as him. And what do you mean by half truth? Did you want me to tell everyone that my dad thinks I'm a disgusting whore that's only successful because I sell my body to white men? That my own father objectifies me and has had said horrific things about my body? That he has tried doing things to me and I never noticed? That my mum knew and never said anything because she was scared? I'm sorry that I didn't tell everyone the full truth, but I'm still trying to process this for fuck's sake. I'm trying so hard to not shut down because I have kids and my husband and they shouldn't have to deal with this. I appreciated everyone's advice and so many of you were extremely kind and understanding. I even appreciate the harsh ones because like I said, I needed to hear it. I read everyone's comments and DMs and really tried to take everything into consideration to be a better person and I'm still trying to be better despite everything. I'm sorry if that isn't enough for you and everyone else that's sending me similar messages. Jeez, and that last comment was absolutely scary. And I truly hope that that OP is seeking the therapy that they talked about and to help them through this. I can't imagine what they're feeling at this moment. They said that they're numb themselves and, and I guess that's just their way of just trying to get past things for the moment. But there's gonna be times where it keeps creeping back into their lives. So hopefully therapy may help them through that. Maybe not through, that's probably the wrong words, but help them sort of deal with those emotions. Because I can't imagine you'd ever get over, you know, the way the father is acting in this. It sounds absolutely scary. But what do you guys make of this situation? Bloody hell. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story does come with an update from Where's the Coffee Bro who says, I, 28 female, feel like I'm ready to leave my marriage to my husband, 42 male. My husband and I have been together for around eight years and married for a little over a year. We met during work. 
I felt like he was the one for me at the time, but red flags started showing up very quickly. I am a plus size woman and can be very insecure at times and, and he has never once made me feel any better. He has only made me feel worse. Once he was spending the night at my apartment when we first started dating, he told me, it's okay, you can lose weight. The real kicker is he said this when he thought I was asleep. I told him I heard him months later. He made up excuses. I tried to forgive him, but the words still sting. The most recent issue is that I was offered a much higher position at my work. This required me to move a few hours away from where we were living and to a different state. This wasn't something I took lightly and I, I had discussed it with him prior to even applying for the position. Side note, I was asked to apply for this job so the chances of me getting it were very high. When I asked him if he would be willing to move and look for work there, he said yes, so I applied. While I was waiting to hear back, he decided to apply for a, a job locally that was better than his current position. I thought it was totally fine. It was a better opportunity and if I didn't get this job, it would be a good fit. However, I got the job. I took the job as soon as I was offered it because he had already said he was excited and willing to move. Turns out his plans had changed without him talking to me. He ended up getting the other job and was suddenly completely fine living apart from me without discussing long distance with me at all. I'm happy he got the job, but I'm mad he didn't even look for work near me or try and be with me. I've been living alone for around five months and he hasn't kept a single promise he gave me. He hasn't called often, he barely talks to me, and when he does, all he really does is complain, and he doesn't visit me often, though I'm only four hours away. I don't expect him here every week, but I have now visited him more times than he has visited me. He constantly makes up excuses for why he can't visit and went as far as to say that I should visit twice in a row because I could only visit two days due to how busy I am with work. The thing that I can't get over is the fact he didn't even try to see me on Christmas. He and I both worked, but he didn't bother to try and make it up that weekend. Eventually, I just told him, don't bother. There are so many other issues I could list with our sex life. How he watches porn constantly, but our sex life is almost non-existent. How I feel more like a mother than a wife. How he will always side with others rather than me. But it would be too long of a post. I think a huge reason I'm staying is I'm staying in the relationship is because I am deathly afraid of being alone. Thank you if you took the time to read this all. Advice is welcomed or just words of encouragement. Now, I'm sure the comments will jump into the whole age thing, but to me, it sounds like this marriage is, and it's, it's gonna sound really harsh, but it sounds like this marriage is over, like he's not even interested in it anymore to me anyway. Your last, one of your last lines was really sad to me and jumped out. Uh, and I feel incredibly bad for OP that they said, I think a huge reason I'm staying in this relationship is because I'm deathly afraid of being alone. And I know it's easy for me to say from the outside, but would you rather be in this relationship Currently, you're in this relationship, you know, that's just not working. You can see it's not working. I don't think it's going to work, in my opinion. And you're potentially stopping yourself from meeting someone else by staying in it. As usual, I maybe jump into conclusions right there, but it's just kind of the way it feels to me in this particular story. We'll cover a couple of comments, then we'll move on to the update to see what OP did next. Kukulara says, I am afraid of being alone. Then says, darling, you are alone now. It sounds like the relationship is over. You have your own place and your own money. Time to make a life with people who want to be in your life. But Wormo says he's already left you, OP. If you stop calling him, it'll be months before he figured it out. Lawyer up, enjoy your job, enjoy your new life. Fire Valkyrie says, to be honest, he seems like a predatory creep. A 34-year-old man who started dating a 20-year-old with low self-esteem. Is being alone really worse than being married to someone who makes no time to visit you? makes major life decisions without talking to you, is more interested in porn than sex and expects you to act like his mother. Really? Sure, being alone has some downsides, but your marriage sounds pretty damn awful too. And the one major upside to being single is that you can go out there and meet someone who loves you and treats you well. If you stay with this guy, you will never have that opportunity. And OP added a couple of little edits. One was said edit saying, thank you for all for your overwhelming support and kindness. It means so much. The second edit said, I just found out he lost his job. And my gut is telling me he's not being entirely truthful or is insanely downplaying as to why he got fired. Now he wants to move down here with me. I 100% do not want him to. And now we're going to move on to that update to see what happens next. Here is a little update to those of you who wanted one. 
First of all, I would like to say thank you for all the kind words and genuine advice. That was all the things I had heard before. It made a massive difference hearing it from strangers who don't even know me. All of that and my friends giving me some tough but much needed love, I finally got the courage to talk to my husband. Not long after I posted my original post, my husband called me to tell me he has ended up losing the job he abandoned me for. He doesn't have a good track record with work, just in general has been seen as lazy, etc. So this wasn't shocking, but was a complete slap in the face. Maybe I'm being harsh, but I felt let down again. As soon as he lost his job, he immediately started talking about how he was going to move in with me. I became sick to my stomach because I did not want him here. I felt and still feel like a fallback option. I wasn't his priority in the first place, but now he is down on his luck, it's just easier for him to move here and start over with my help. I told him to not look at jobs here right away and look where he is, and he somewhat agreed. After about a week of us not talking, he messaged me out of nowhere, telling me that he had found a job in my area that was a great opportunity. He used the same wording he had used with a job he had just lost. I was talking with a friend when he sent the message. She told me point blank, talk to him now or he's going to show up on your doorstep and you're going to be stuck in this situation for another few years. And you promised yourself you would talk to him this week. She was 100% right. So I went and talked to him. I told him everything, how I felt, how I'm feeling, how heartbroken I am, how his issues and his treatment of me have pushed me over the edge. He realized that a lot of what I said was things I had already brought up. He did own up to some things, yet not everything. I'd given him a million chances during the conversation to tell me the things I should improve on because I am well aware I am not blameless. I should have talked to him more, etc. The only thing he could think of was the fact that I don't incite or participate in sex with him. I brought up my issues with sex and my insecurities. He said he understood, but I don't think he understood how much it affected me from my past trauma and other bad experiences and how he never made me feel better. I then brought up how I hate how much porn he watches. Side note, I don't hate porn, I just think excessive use can be bad and how it gave him unrealistic expectations of sex. He said, I feel like I watch it to get turned on to have sex with you. That comment made my stomach drop and my already low self-confidence deep dived even lower. Also, I knew this was a complete lie as he never initiated sex after watching porn, not once. I knew right then I was done. How could I even consider repairing this when he feels like he needs to watch other people to get turned on enough to have sex with me? Mind you, he would casually watch porn without jerking off or anything. This man always had porn open like a Spotify playlist. He is desperately trying to keep me, messaging me constantly how much he loves me, making YouTube playlists of songs, sending me flowers, etc. But it's all too little, too late in my eyes. He's also downplaying the situation to his closest friends and family, just chalking up to me being upset with him. All of this just makes me more upset, anxious, on edge, and quite frankly, mad. I already started filling out the paperwork to file for divorce when I'm 100% ready and will be asking him to stop texting me as much, particularly all the lovey-dovey outer character stuff and sending me things this week. This whole thing has been a lot, but I am grateful for everyone who took the time to send me words of encouragement. I have realized that I am continuing to realize my self-worth and, and I know I am worth so much more than a man who never tried in our whole eight years of relationship up until now. There's more I could get into, but I think I'll leave it here. Thank you again for all your kind words and advice. Feel free to comment on the original post if you'd like to say anything or would like to give words of wisdom or advice. And I remember a very, very similar situation we had a while back, you know, when they were splitting up and then the other partner sent like loads of gifts and stuff. And I think the comments educated me on that matter and they called it love bombing or something like that where they just shower you with gifts, trying to win over your affection, and it's a, a tactic that's used. But well done to OP in this situation, for, you know, realizing their self-worth and stepping out of a situation, which has got to be difficult, I know. As I said before, you know, it's very easy for me to say, oh yeah, split up, very easy, you know. But they've been together for eight years, although the relationship has clearly been shit from what we can see here. It's still got to be difficult in some ways, right? But now let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, a huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today, getting involved in the stories. You know it means the absolute world to me. I can never thank you enough for what you do. If you'd like to support the channel further, 
Never any pressure to do so though, just if you want to, there is links in the description to Patreon or you can click that join button down below for YouTube. Hugely helps out, but as again, never expected. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that today.